What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. You wanna make stuff? You wanna sell stuff? Well, maybe I can help. Let's start off strong. The item that I sell the most, more than all the other items combined, are boxes. I don't understand why so many woodworkers shy away from making boxes because the things will fly off the shelf. From my experience, when you make a wooden box, especially if you can personalize it, they are a hot commodity. The key to this is to make sure that they're dark. So you can make them out of cherry, make them out of walnut, or make them out of a lighter wood, but then stain them. But people want dark boxes. So if you make a bunch of boxes out of maple, you're not gonna sell that many. I'll mill down my lumber to whatever thickness I decide for this box. And that really depends on the size of the box. So if I'm making a bigger box, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. If I'm making a smaller box, I'll make it a little bit thinner. On average, I usually cut this down to about two and a half inches to three inches wide. For this example here, I made one that is two and three quarters inches. So so right in the middle of that. I decided to make this box seven inches long, four inches wide, and I completely made these measurements up because that's what my eyeball said looks really good. I do most of my work at the table saw, so I cut my long and short pieces using the miter gauge, but you could also use a miter saw too. When it comes to joinery, I recommend keeping it simple. If you decide you wanna go with crazy dovetails, well, that's gonna be added labor, which means your price is probably gonna go up. So for my little box here, I decided to use rabbit joints. I lowered the blade down to about half the thickness of my work piece, and then nibbled away the underside of my two long pieces until the short side fit flush into the long side. My box bottom is gonna be a quarter inch thick board. Using the table saw, I cut a groove on the inside face of all four of my pieces, bumped the fence over just a little bit, made another pass until that board fit nicely into that groove. If you're making a lot of these at one time, that means you're gonna use a lot of clamps or you can do what I do, which is use masking tape or painter's tape. Make sure you squeeze all those joints really tight, tape it with a whole bunch of tape, let it dry. While the glue's dried, we can start working on the lid. I like to have my lids be removable because hinges add added cost and added labor. I milled down a board to about a half inch thick and then I cut it to its final size, making sure that it's about a quarter inch extra on all four sides of the actual box itself. I wanna have a little bit of overhang there. Now this quarter inch measurement, I completely made up, so feel free to make up your own measurements. I lowered the saw blade down to about an eighth of an inch tall maybe a little higher, eh, I'm just making it up. And then I cut the long sides, I make a pass, I rotate the board around, and then I cut the other side. Bump the fence over a little bit, do the same thing. Cut one side, rotate it around, cut the other side. And I'll keep doing that until the box lid fits into the box. I do the same thing for the short sides. I just use a miter gauge instead of using the fence, but I'll make a pass, rotate the board around, make a pass, move my stop lock over, make a pass, rotate it around, make a pass, until the lid fits into the box the way it's supposed to be. A little sanding and we have us a beautiful looking box. Now these things sell really quick, especially if you can do any sort of personalization, engraving, CNC, whatever on them. Now this took me maybe an hour or so to make, but don't just make one because you need to maximize your profits, which means make a bunch of them, batch them out, five, 10 at one time. You're gonna sell them, so that's gonna help you out that way. And also it's just way easier. You set up your tools one time, you make a cut, you just keep batching it all the way through. So now that we got this done, uh, what's next? Okay, this next project's gonna seem almost too simple. And I thought the same thing until I started selling them like crazy, which are tea light candle holders. I would make hexagon shaped candle holders and sell them as sets and they would sell out quite often. There are multiple ways to cut hexagons. Now, one way that you can do it is using the table saw. So I will mark the center point of my board. Then I'll turn my miter gauge to 30 degrees. And then I'll make cuts sneaking up on it until I hit that center point. Flip the board over and then cut the other side. That takes care of one side of your hexagon. I cut the scrap board to 30 degrees. And this is just a quick little jig to help hold the candle holder in place. Now I also added a toggle clamp onto that to help hold the board in place so I don't have to put my hands close to the blade and then I don't accidentally, you know, cut my body in half. Cut one side, flip the board over, cut the other side. Now you got a hexagon. This is something that you're gonna want to make efficiently and be able to batch out. So you need to come up with a way to make them quick and safely and all repeatable. So I would recommend making a dedicated jig to this based off the size of the can holders you wanna make. The DIY Montreal has a fantastic video on how she made a sled to do this. So I would definitely check out that video because that sled she came up with is absolutely perfect. Mark the center point of your hexagon and using a one and a half inch diameter Forster bit, drill a hole about a half inch deep. This is the perfect size hole to hold a little tea light candle that I purchased from Target. Now here's the key to this, sell them in sets. So sell them in sets of three, five, seven, nine, something like that. 
and include the candles too. That way when people are looking at your listing online, they will see they get the candle holders and all the candles all together and the candles are easily replaceable because just about everyone in the United States has a Target nearby. You wanna start really batching these things out in the spring. The reason why I say that is because people are shopping in the spring for a lot of the weddings that are gonna be hitting in the summer months. And these are fantastic decorations for wedding receptions to put on the tables. Also, there's a lot of houses that are purchased in the summer months. People are always looking for that perfect housewarming gift and well, these fit that bill. Another. Another. <laughs> Before I get into the third video, let me give a big shout out to the members of our superhero community over on Patreon. Members like Brad Cheney really help out this channel and allow me to do what I do. Members get extra footage, behind the scenes, sneak peeks, woodworking plans, and their support goes a long way into helping this channel grow. So if you are interested, then head on over to patreon.com slash newtonmakes and sign up. Our third woodworking project that sells is any sort of unique serving boards. Unique, that is the key to this. I like to let nature do all the talking with this. So anything that's live edge, that natural edge of logs or slabs, or you can even take some firewood and cut it up and make a serving board out of it, but keep that live edge on one side at least, those are big sellers, especially if you're dealing with dark woods. Your walnuts, your cherries, those are always gonna do better as a serving board than something like maple. They're one of the easiest projects to batch out because they're kind of simple if you really think about it. You're gonna do some sanding. You might plane it down a little bit just to get it nice and flat. You might wanna put a bevel on the bottom just so it's a little bit easier to pick up. But all in all, not really a whole lot going on here. You can make them for a specific purpose, such as a shot flight or a beer flight. You know, take your router, ride out some circles in that thing or ride out a big tray in it so you can put you know food, snacks, whatever in it. So you can make them to serve a specific purpose. But in my experience, kind of done it both ways. I've made a lot of them, especially for particular restaurants where they wanted a bunch of different flights. Also, I've sold a ton of them that are just plain because they're universal and anybody could use them for whatever. I put Live Edge projects in a different category than I would a typical cutting board because of the competition. Go on to Etsy and look up cutting boards and you'll see that all those top sellers sell a ton of cutting boards, but at the same time, they don't necessarily make them. You can tell they buy them in bulk, probably for just a couple bucks each. And then all they really do is provide the engraving, which is their version of uniqueness. As a one man shop, I just can't compete with those sorts of prices because of time and materials. But what I can compete with is the uniqueness of the item. I can provide a live edge item, a once in a lifetime type of board to a customer that those types of companies can't provide. Because I focused heavily on getting these types of boards, I was able to get reoccurring customers like restaurants that wanted more and more and more of these rare items that they just couldn't get anywhere else. Now, whether you're gonna sell boxes or candle holders or serving boards or cutting boards or whatever else, pick a finishing method that is really simple, really easy to apply and doesn't take forever. So don't pick a finishing method that's gonna take you a whole week to get through because you just don't have time for all that. And also you probably don't have space. You're gonna make a whole lot of items, you're gonna have them spread all over your shop and you ain't gonna have no place to work. A lot of people signed off after seeing the third project because this video talks about three different projects that you can sell. But for y'all that stuck around, I'll give you a fourth one. This bonus project idea is what completely changed my outlook on how to make money off of woodworking. And that is stop looking for regular customers and instead start catering to your fellow woodworkers. Let's say I make this box and then I turn around and sell it. Then I gotta make another one and I sell that. And I keep doing that until finally I just lose my mind for making the same thing over and over again. Unless that's something that you enjoy doing. Now instead, imagine making that box and then selling it to an infinite number of customers and you never have to make it again. Well, that's what I talk about when I say, why don't you cater to your fellow woodworkers? Let's say you make a cutting board, you post it on social media and you got people coming in there and saying, hey, this looks fantastic. Hey, how'd you make that? Well, maybe consider making a set of plans or instructions that teach someone else how to make that. Enable your fellow makers. I'm sure that many of you have purchased plans before. I know I have. But whenever I started selling plans, that's when there was a monumental change in how I address making money off of woodworking. You may think you need to have a big online following to be able to do this, and that definitely helps. But I don't want that to deter you from starting because you gotta start somewhere. And it really comes down to making really cool projects 
and having some sort of social media or some way to connect with your fellow makers. Next time you come up with a really cool design for a cutting board, think about making a set of plans to go with it. I know it's a complete pain in the butt to do that. However, once you've made them, you have them and you can sell them as many times as you want. You can advertise them on social media or create your own website if you really want to. Since I started doing that and focusing on my fellow makers, I cut back drastically on the number of clients that I would take on for something. And it's been a big stress relief for me because making stuff to sell can be a bit stressful. Hopefully you enjoyed those project ideas. I highly recommend checking out this other video up here because it builds upon some of these foundations that we talked about here. And to me again, get in your shop and build something awesome.